What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Pack Only Road to Foot Champs. I want to thank you guys for your support on the last video. I asked you guys if you wanted to see another one today to smash 10,000 likes, although this will be a late upload and technically uploaded on Monday at 3am rather than... Uh, wait, is it Saturday today? Saturday, it's Sunday today, yeah. Technically uploaded on Monday rather than Sunday. Wow, I just need to get my bearings. Um... Then, uh, but uh, you guys hit the 10,000 likes, so here we are. So if you want to see more of this series, the more you like it, the more I'll upload it. Also, if you guys want any uh, PSN or MSP codes, don't forget to check out g2a.com. Link is in the description below. So the bronze pack method started to pay a little bit of dividends for us in today's video. A lot of the Scottish League players that we had um, became a little bit valuable for the um, Griffiths SBC. We had a few extra players here or there that were just quite worth a little bit. I could have sold Savage for a couple of thousand coins, but he's actually an important part of the team right now due to the fact that he gives that strong link to Felipe Luis, which basically puts Felipe Luis on 10 chemistry in any team I could use, except for a very brief few formations. Um, so I was happy to, uh, I was basically happy to do that. What we're going to see in today's video, guys, is going to be. Um, me qualifying again for foot champs, of course, because I never make it to gold three at least because we don't play the full complement of games. I have to qualify each week, uh, which I don't mind too much. I I'm a little bit um, annoyed, I guess. A little bit annoyed at the um, the way EA are now distributing the rewards because they're now giving out the rewards Thursdays at 6 p.m., um, I usually like to get the rewards in first before I then try and qualify just so we can improve the team and go forwards. But the problem with that is if I leave it till Thursday at 6, then I've also got other videos to make. My Road to Glory, my main channel, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I genuinely might run out of time. Like They're literally giving out rewards 11, no, 13 hours before the new Foot Champ starts. So I'm going to have to try and figure out a different way to qualify earlier on. I wouldn't mind moving up through the divisions um, to get into Division 2 slash Division 1 eventually so that we could uh, you know, just qualify quite easily through the divisions. But in the, meantime, in the meantime, we're going to have to qualify with the tournaments. There might be problems for us in the near future. This next weekend coming, not this weekend that you're watching this now, but next weekend's weekend league is Premier League only. I don't have a full Premier League squad, um, although I do have a full like full eleven. I don't have a bench and reserves. I will be in a very very tough spot if we um, if we don't pack some good BPL players, basically, or just some BPL players. Uh, we'll be in a tough spot. So the first game we played here was actually a really really difficult game. Um, you know, usually the the traditionally the knockout tournaments aren't the most difficult. Even with the teams that we have, we are yet to lose a game in the daily knockouts. I believe this is the third time we've qualified now. Um, I also played one other tournament. So we will be 13 wins and no losses in the daily knockout tournaments, which I, I genuinely find remarkable given the circumstances of the series. And with that in mind, we have got a whole lot of uh, comments from the last video. Some real interesting stuff to talk about. First one was from Jordan Reese Motram. It says that knock by Wilson at 4 minutes 3 seconds was fucking class. I personally enjoy this most out of everything you upload. Close with Draft of Glory. Keep it up, net. And the reason why I picked this wasn't because of the thing with Wilson. Although, if you want to go back to the last video and watch, there was a part where I got through with Wilson and then used, which you don't see much this year, it's just the bridge function. Um, it's called bridge. And what you do is, when you're in the vicinity of the tackle area of the player, you use the right thumbstick and they push the ball one way and run around the other. Like, like I, I, don't, I guess that's why it's called a bridge. But, like, forming a, a bridge motion. I don't know why it's called bridge, but that's what it's called. Um, it used to be really, really effective back in FIFA 14 and FIFA 15. And I don't know if it's still effective now. And there's just more effective or better used um, ways to, to play the game. Or if people just don't use it for whatever reason. But the bridge function is still really good when you've got very, very fast players. And for me, Callum Wilson has been fantastic. Like, he's, he was such a blessing to get in the pack. You know, a couple of episodes ago when I named it, uh, like, Amazing re Rewards, it was because he, he is amazing for us. And he was amazing for us. You can see there, I, I kind of dominated the game, but it took me a long time to actually win the game. Definitely deserve to go through in that one. But um, a lot of people are enjoying this series. So I thank you guys, everyone that's here, everyone that's around. 
everyone that, um, that's, that loves the idea of me being forced to play with these players, thank you for being here, you know. I want to give you guys uh, something a bit different to every other YouTuber, and although now this year Road to Glories have just made a comeback, you know, obviously I've been doing a Road to Glory for e every year I've done it, uh, the last few years specifically I did it when no one else did because they weren't getting views. Road to Glory again now is is uh, kind of a big thing. You know, doing well in FIFA right now without spending money is huge because of foot champs. Um, so a lot of other YouTubers are doing Road to Glories or Road to Glory style uh, series, which is totally fine. I, you know, I, I enjoy watching other people. I, I enjoy personally Road to Glories more than anything, which is why I enjoy making them more than anything because it's the content I actually like to watch. So I love watching all the other YouTubers' uh, Road to Glory, specifically AAs, really, because his Road to Foot Champs is just, like, out of this world. How the dude gets top 100 in an account where he doesn't spend any money and he just plays the hell out of people, I, it's just, it's crazy. I wish I was that good at FIFA. I'm not that good at FIFA this year. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit short of top 100, I think. Hopefully I can spend the rest of this year kind of, like, learning the game and maybe eventually get there back end of the year. But uh, I think I'm, I, I, I don't know. Most weeks I get around 32 to 33 wins. Some weeks I get as little as 27 or 28. The, the odd week here or there I've got 34 wins. So I'm not far off breaking into that kind of 36, 37 win top 100 mark, but I'm you know not close either. Like there's a, there's a big gap between 37 wins and 27 wins. And uh, for me to be able to close that gap, got a long ways to long ways to go a lot to learn but i am trying to learn i'm trying to figure the game out you know um even if i get frustrated at this game sometimes it, it's it's more frustration out of my own uh, lack of understanding than anything else now i thought we had lost this game 2-1 down in the 118th minute it was a tough game anyway i genuinely thought oh, well never mind we'll, we'll go back in and try again but i kept playing i kept playing i kept playing jermaine defoe was there in the 120th minute to score for me and it took us to penalties which eventually I won. The next comment is from Sean Tarp. He says, Net move your face cam so we can see the team's chemistry. Um I get I, I get like a little few comments about this every now and then. Where would you guys prefer the face cam on videos? If you literally like let me know in the comment section if you could see if you if like if you wanted my face cam anywhere just let me know in the comment section where you would want it and whatever the like the most popular choice would be would probably be the most logical choice to put the face cam. I just put it in top right because that's where it's naturally gone all the time. Um, but if uh, if you guys wanted it bottom right, bottom left, not at all. If you wanted it smaller and in the top right, let me know guys. I, I can move the face cam no problem at all if it's causing some uh, disturbance. Babu says, Legend says... Nepenthes doesn't need players to win because he's a god, like if you agree. Well, to the four people that like that, thank you. Um, but that comment also ties in with, um, with Top 3's comment. And Top 3 says, you are saying that it doesn't matter which team we have, and it's all to the player. But you also say how that you're not winning as much games in foot champs on this account because you don't have a good enough team. What do you mean to that? Um, and this wasn't a question asked out of malice or anything like that. And, and it's a very valid question. And I'm going to try and explain myself... I'm probably going to be contradictory in certain areas, but try try to listen to like the whole point rather than individual uh, parts of what I'm saying. So, um, the team that I've got is not good enough to compete, but it doesn't matter realistically about what team you have when you have free reign to buy players. What I'm trying to say is, if you've got a, a well-rounded good team that you can buy for cheap, doesn't matter on the value, it, it will perform well because there are certain aspects in this game that are overpowered. Low driven shots are overpowered, pace is overpowered, physicality is overpowered, uh, you know, workhorses in midfield is overpowered. So what I mean to that end is, you can have Renato Sanchez, who's like, what, 1,000 or 1,500 coins, and he is going to do 99% of the job that Patrick Vieira will do. There is a huge disparity in rating, in value, and in stats. But Renato Sanchez will do basically the same job to the point where you you pretty much will never, ever notice, the, you know, the fact that you didn't have Vieira. You'll never come out of a game saying, my God, if I had Patrick Vieira in midfield, I probably would have won that game. You'll never say that. However, for me, when I've got Pardo in midfield, I can quite happily say if I had Renato Sanchez in this team instead of Pardo, I probably would have done better. Why? 
First things first is because Pardo's lack of pace is just massively noticeable. But not only is lack of pace, all these common gold cards I'm using with low stamina, they are dead by the 60th, 65th or 70th minute to the point where they genuinely just cannot compete. They can't run. Like, I, I lose a few games in here on this account because my players literally cannot run by the 70th minute. So when I come up against somebody who's got Anthony Martial, who again is another player who is just as good as Ronaldo. You know, you're not going to... There, there will be very few times where you're like, God damn, if I had Ronaldo, that would have been a goal. But Martial is not. Um, so, like, when you've got Martial and you just blitz past my centre-back who's off-chem in a terrible team, slow as hell and has no stamina, I can't do anything about that because my team has cost me. But when you have free reign to buy any player... Even with 15 or 20,000 coins, you can buy the right players that fit the meta of the game. There is a meta, and in that meta, there are certain players that just work. Kante, Sanchez, Pogba, Martial, uh, Lukaku, any, any fast player, any player with like, you know, Florenzi at right back. Like, you, you see Florenzi a lot, you don't see Licksteiner a lot. However, if you had Licksteiner instead of Florenzi, you wouldn't really notice the difference much. But when, for me, I've got Conco, I notice the difference. That being said, I still win a fair few games. I still do myself justice. I still play really well. But what we've got, again, with the difference between my team right here is I don't have the right chem styles. I don't even have the right formation that I want because I'd have to suffer too much. And I don't have players that fit the meta compared to people that can just buy any player off the market. So when I say my team isn't able to compete, it's not because of the actual team itself. It's because of the individual things within the team. Um, and, and even then, I'm still able to compete. Like, look at this guy's team we come up against here. Martial, Inform Lacazette, Ones to Watch Dembele, Kante, Pogba, Movember Machuidi, SBC Kazawa, Smalling Bai, Butland with an Attributes card, and Hector Bellerin. And we won this game with my team, with my just... Really, really bad team, which goes to show that my skill was far more important than my opponent's team. However, there will be games where I'm very closely skilled to a player I'm playing against, or I'm just a little better but not enough to the point where my, the team disparity is too much. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Bottom line is, when you get to pick whatever team you want, even within a small budget... You're still able to buy overpowered players that fit the meta of the game that help you win games and close that gap between team rating, team players, etc. And really open the gap between player skill. When you don't get to pick a team, like I don't here, and I only get to use the players that are at hand through packs, that team gap opens up, which closes a skill gap a little bit. Um, but that still being said, I'm still winning games against some teams. You should see some of the teams I beat in this coming up, you know, the next couple of videos, guys. I beat some absolutely insane teams. One guy actually messaged me afterwards. He just said, how? And I, I just messaged him back like, good game, bro. That, you know, it was a tough game. He literally messaged me back saying, what did I do to deserve this? Because he had an incredible team. And I had my Spanish common rare, you know, common team. Crappy players, Agarexte up front, who has no pace or anything, and I beat him. And I beat him quite comfortably. And I think he was just taken aback by the fact that I beat him so comfortably. Um, so that's what I mean by that. I hope you understand, like, you know, like, look at, look at the team that I've got. It's just, it shouldn't be able to compete with this team. But, play, that, like, if, if anything, this does go to show that player skill is more important than team. But that's also not to be said that I won't ever not lose games because of my team by the way look at those match stats two shots on target four goals how does that even work um mega archer 64 said net thank you so much for the daily uploads i really appreciate your content but if you need a break please feel free we'll always support you keep up the good work i'm good dude man like now that we've come through the back end of uh, you know the problems uh, that we've had recently um I'm good, man. I may look tired, but I, like I have this thing. Like right now, I can see that I look tired. I've, it's it's quarter past one in the afternoon. I've been up since eleven o'clock this morning, and I still look like I've just woken up. And this is something that's been with me since I was like a teenager. I I used to get up at like eight o'clock for school or seven thirty, seven forty-five for school in the morning. And even by lunchtime at school, I would still look like I've just woken up. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like something wrong with my dieting. So, you know, the way I sleep. Maybe I have broken sleep. Maybe I sleep too late. Maybe watching TV when I fall asleep is a bad thing. 
but I always take a long time to look like I've woken up. Um, so even now, now the fact that I've been up for over two hours, I still look like I've just woken up, which is mental. Um, but dude, I'm good, man. I'm lost without work. I'm lost without just doing what I do every day. You know, if, if I were to say, okay, no FIFA, no YouTube, no video editing, no recording today, I wouldn't really know what to do. Um, especially this week, given the fact that my girlfriend and my daughter are out in India for a week, I'm literally home alone here for a week. Um, and if, if I were like, okay, what, like if I turned everything off, what would I do? I don't know what I'd do. I'd be like, right, let's play some video games. <laughs> um, but, uh, I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the, uh, concern, dude. Thank you. And Donald Trump, good to have you here, Donald. Just, you should be doing many other things, but thank you for being here. Says, I find it hysterical when he takes penalties with his goalkeeper, even though he's losing. The reason why I do that is actually, like, it started on this account, and I, I, would, I would do it on other accounts if I wasn't trying to boost goal stats on my Eden Hazard. The reason why I do it on this account is because I wanted to show, I was talking to someone, I can't remember who, um, about the fact that it doesn't matter who you take the penalty with, because you're going to go the same way, the outcome is going to be the same regardless of who the penalty taker is. So, if I take it with my striker, or if I take it with my goalkeeper, if I'm going for the bottom right, I'm going for the bottom right no matter which one I'm using it with. So if I score, I'll score the goal no matter what. And if I miss, I'll miss no matter what. The only thing that could be problematic with taking it with the goalkeeper is if I miss and their goalkeeper actually saves it, then my goalkeeper is out of goal. So they might have a good counter opportunity to score. But in general, the goalkeeper, it, it makes no difference to which player you take the penalty with. It makes absolutely no difference. Um, a few more comments here uh, available. You could be playing better because there's less pressure on winning games because of the team you have. I do not disagree with that. I also think that there could be an ELO system in place that we've just overlooked massively. Because I said in the last video, some of the players I come up against, they're not the best. Um, and, uh, you know... Even with a great team, if you're a bad player, you're going to lose to a good player with a bad team. And I'm not saying I'm a good player or anything by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I can feel the, the difference in player ability between the two accounts. So I do think that there could well be a, an ELO system in place. There's a couple more comments that were really interesting that I'm going to save for the next video to, to read out. Um, because they, they were very, uh, very good, very interesting comments. But this is pretty much going to be the end of the video for today, guys. I ended up building a uh, two-player upgrade pack. We got ourselves a really usable player in Montero. Good pace, four-star skill moves. He's going to be imperative to this team. So I was very, very happy to pick him up. But, guys, this will be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy this, be sure to leave a like rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.